Welcome to worship on this evening of Ash Wednesday, where the Holy Spirit calls us together as people of God. No matter wherever, however, and whenever we gather together in worship, God is present with us. As we enter deeper into worship, let us just take a few moments and close our eyes and to gently just breathe in and breathe out and feel the Spirit of God entering. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. From our God, who loves us with an everlasting love, who brings forth a new creation in Christ, who leads us by the Spirit in the wilderness, grace and abundant mercy be with you all, and also with you, and let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life forming us to serve you and our neighbors. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus commends almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, but emphasizes that spiritual devotion must not be done for show. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beginning with the first verse. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, 
so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. And let us pray. Gracious God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Many of us have seen one or several of the Toy Story movies. Anybody seen any of those? Yeah. These movies are about toys who belong to a boy named Andy. As Andy begins to grow older, many of the toys are in a sense left behind and begin to collect dust. They are toys, of course, that when their owner is out of sight, they come alive. In the movie Toy Story 2, Woody, a cowboy doll, gets stolen by a toy collector who plans to sell him to a museum in Japan. This toy collector spent a great deal of time restoring Woody to his original splendor, sewing a frayed arm back on, adding a little more vibrancy of blush back on his cheeks, painting over scuff marks, in a sense, cleaning up the smudges of little boy's hands and dirt made over the years, he was played with adoringly and loved. There's this one scene in the movie where Woody, the doll, sits down to watch TV, because of course nobody's around, he came alive, and in a sense, he feels like he's lost his identity. He doesn't know what his purpose is anymore. Andy has been worried that the once little boy is outgrowing playing with him. He's been worried that what once brought the little boy joy was fading away. He's been worried that the dust will continue to collect on him as he continues to not be played with and forgotten. As he sits to obliviously watch TV, he hears a song, and one of the lyrics goes like this. No one will ever love you the way I do. No one will ever love you the way I do. And he looks down at his freshly painted boot, and he rubs off some of that new paint, and he sees Andy written on the bottom of his boot. And seeing Andy's name on the bottom of his boot, he remembers whose he is and whose he is. And no matter the paint, Woody is still chosen, claimed, and marked forever. On this day every year, this Ash Wednesday, we are reminded too that we are covered in dust, a dustiness with a purpose. It is this purpose that we are called to delve into a little deeper, you see, we are not much different than Woody, who is marked with the name Andy on his foot. I cannot speak for each of you, but I know for myself there have been times in my life where I've lost my identity, and I've been unsure of my purpose. There are many reasons why this can happen, but it might feel like everything is just a little dusty, unclear. Maybe this dustiness can look like a frayed edge of life, a loss of vibrancy in what used to bring joy, and attempting to hide the scuff marks in our hearts. 
Maybe it feels like you put a smile on your face and feel like you're play acting through your days. Maybe it looks like searching for where your treasure really lies. This is our dustiness. As we think more about our human dustiness, we think about both our humanness and our mortality and frailty. There is not a graveside service where I have not said these words, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the Bible, it also tells us that ashes were used to express grief and sorrow for sins and faults. And when a person put on sackcloth and ashes, it was a sign of repentance, a turning to God and regret or remorse. Yet these words heard at a gravesite not only herald our mortality, but it heralds us back to the words in the creation story from the book of Genesis where God formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living being, and then God said, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We came from the earth, the dust of the ground, and we will return to the earth, the dust of the ground. Ash Wednesday acknowledges that bodies indeed die, and yet our bodies were always made for life. Yet we are not left in this place of grief and brokenness. We are reminded of the cross of ashes we will receive on this night. It traces the same invisible cross received in the waters of our baptisms where we are claimed and named a child of God. The promises here are filled with the hopefulness of repentance and that our mortality turns into immortality in our eternal life. Those words spoken over you, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, are meant to be hope filled words, and a reminder that nothing you do or say can ever remove that mark. It is your identity. It is your purpose. You are a child of God. In the cross of watery baptism placed upon us and the cross of dirt and dust and ash that are placed upon our coffins and urns before burial, we have the in-between span of life the other focal point of Ash Wednesday, a time of living our baptismal callings and sharing our spirit-given gifts with the world. For the way of Jesus encompasses our guide into this fullness of the in-between span from birth to death. And this is what the gospel reading tonight reminds us of in its words about not being hypocrites. Hypocrites in the ancient Greek literally means stage actors. We are reminded not to just give alms, to fast, to pray, to search without our actions being motivated out of our love for God. In other words, we give out of love and grace, not for the recognition or praise of others. In all that we do, let us act like no one is watching. Let our actions come out of our love, not only for God, but for one another. You see, God is kind of like Andy in the movie we started the sermon with and his toy cowboy Woody. Our dustiness shows up in our scuff marks of life, our loss of vibrancy and sharing the light of Christ with others and our frayed edges of living without our identity and purpose at the forefront. And yet, just like Woody was marked, claimed, and named with the one who loved him on the bottom of his boot, we too are marked, claimed, and named by the cross on our forehead by God who loves each one of us. And just like that song on Toy Story 2, God sings these words to us. No one 
will ever love you the way I do. No one will ever love you the way I do. People of God, remember that you might be dusty. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. These are hope-filled words for today and every day. And for this, we give thanks to God. And let us this night use this poem by Jan Richardson as our prayer. It's called Blessing the Dust. Let us pray. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has been made it in through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us not be marked for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. And all God's people said, Amen. and thankful for all the ways that you give to our congregation, which allows us to serve our community and our world. Your offering can be received this evening as you leave. You'll find the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary. You can also give online. The link is on our website. You can do a one-time gift or a recurring gift. Thank you so much for your generosity and to the lives of the people we touch. pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, the following in the way of the cross. We may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death 
to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. You are invited, therefore, to a discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection, to the great ending and new beginning in the resurrection. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we call to repentance. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We come to repent of those things that separate us from God and to receive the grace of God. Bless the Lord who forgives all sins. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Bless these ashes and those who receive them. May the sign of our mortality and penitence Remind us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. And may the taste of the foretaste of the feast to come remind us all our forgiveness of our sins. Amen. As Jesus, as Jesus draws the whole world to himself, receive the mark of the cross and be fed by the meal. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to be seated.
journey about these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those who are in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you.